Well, this is Bishop R.J. Edwards, and it's indeed a pleasure to be back with you on this radio station. I know that you're going through your tests and your trials at this time when COVID-19, the master plague, is on the land. I want you to know that God will lift you up, turn your life around. In spite of what we see, God is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Stay tuned as I go to church. We have been preaching the word of God. Luke chapter 6, verse 6 through 11. And it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand, rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath day to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy? And looking around about upon them, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored whole as the other. And they were filled with madness and communed one with the other what they might do to Jesus. The man with the withered right hand. What is the story behind this? Why this story was recorded? I want you to know that behind the story is a hidden parable. Jesus hid something in there so that those of us who are here today who have some withered situations in our lives can get something out of it. There's a hidden parable that Jesus wanted to show us in the 21st century and I'm going to dive deep in it so that we could have the meaning of the story. There's something that God wanted to release in the story and so he allowed it to be written. I believe that he allowed the story to be in scripture because he's sending each and every one of us a message that whatever is with it in our lives can be restored. Whoever is written off, whoever is affected, whatever has been destroyed in our family, there can be restoration. Now, today I know that I'm talking to somebody who needs restoration. Because they are withered homes, deformed relationship. Some of your relationship is so bad. There are withered families here today. There are people who are suffering hurt and pains and withered situations in your life. Your bank book is withered. Some of you have some withered refrigerators. Westinghouse refrigerator. But it's with it because everything there is with it. Some of you are here today that love God, but there's something that is with it in your relationship with God. Don't look at me like I'm a stranger because you know what I'm talking about. Some of you are so much with it until you can't even lift your hands the way you want to lift them because of the with it situation in your life. It has bombarded you and it's trying to stop you. But there is an anointing here. There's something that is in this word that is going to help somebody to bounce back. From scripture, it would seem as though the man's deformity was not from birth. Now, of course, there are some of us who have some womb situation where from the womb you have been affected. Somebody put a curse on your mama. And while you were in the womb, you got affected. Don't you look at those circumstances and think it's normal. It's coming from way back when. When you've been hit so hard. Because somebody said a word. 
It's coming from the womb. But whatever word that has been spoken against you, I'm going to hit it down. I got the power. The Bible says, when I come into meetings like these, I come to wrestle. And I don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against evil rulers of darkness, against those spirits that exist in high places. So I'm here wrestling today. The man's deformity was not from birth. It was from seeming a recent situation. Some of you are having some recent situation. Yesterday, everything was all right. Last year, everything was well. Last month, it was good. But all of a sudden, there's a shift in your circumstances. Somebody is having a now condition. And you wondered where it came from. But somebody in this house today has got to bounce back. I don't care what have caused the deformity, but somehow you are wounded. Some of you have had some bad situations. Comes through your family. Some of you have some wound that came out of your family. Some family members that you trust. Some family members that you love and you thought that they loved you. But all of a sudden, the same people who you showed love are the same people who come back at you. And now you're wounded, deformed, in church yet deformed. Some people who are here today, the recent situation wants to drive you up into Bellevue. But I say to you, don't get mad now. Press on through. I saw somebody running from a snake. The thing turned a snake. What the Lord was showing me in the vision, it was a family member who turned a snake. And the Lord began to give me a great revelation. And then in the book of 2 Samuel 9, 4, and 5, there's a profound story about a man who had royalty in his blood. Brother Shep, they call him Mephibosheth, but I call him Brother Shep, a good guy. Everything was all right. He had a recent situation. When he was born, his hands were okay. His feet was okay. When he landed on earth, everything was all right. But in his infancy, somebody was giving him care. And while they were giving him care, they were running. And while they ran, he got dropped. He didn't drop himself, but somebody dropped him. Some of you been dropped. Life was all right until you got dropped. That spouse of yours, you thought everything was all right until he dropped you. She dropped you and now you are in trouble. A friend that you had, all of a sudden you found that you got dropped. But out of the shepherd's situation, he ended up with a limb that was destroyed. He had no feet. And now the man, because he had no feet, yet he was A man with royalty. Which tells me that there are people in the church who are royal. But have deformity. Blood of Jesus running through your vein. But yet you're suffering deformity. Every deformity that Satan sent in your direction. Go fix it. Come on say today is my fixing day. Because God is going to fix my situation. But look at the irony of the matter because here the man who had royalty in his blood, where did he find himself? In a poor situation. Where he was was stink. Where he was was so poor because that's where the poor people live. That's where the sick folks live. That's where the invalid live. That's where people who have been dropped have been living. People have been experiencing sadness. Some some of you have been living in sad situation. And it's not by you. It's not you that caused it. But somebody dropped you. Now you are in your lonely bar. Lonely. You feel so alone. So sad. So poor. Because of this deformity. It drives you into a bad state. Now you've been looked down at. Yet you have royalty 
The story is not registered by chance. It is here because somebody needs to understand that though you're faced with your situation and your loaded bar, God still have mercy. He'll reach down to where you are. He'll come to where you are. And I know today that God is fixing to go where somebody is. I don't know if you know that God is visiting you even now. Because right now the anointing is in this room. That, that somebody is about to be transformed. Somebody is about to be given beauty for ashes. And the oil of joy for mourning. And the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. In the nick of time before Mephibosheth died, David was sitting on the throne. Can I remind somebody that God still sits on the throne? And David started to think, what can I do for somebody? Can you tell me, is there anybody left from Saul's house that I can help? I don't know what is left in your house. Some of your whole family has been ripped by forces. And you are now tied up in a web that comes from a family curse. But is there anything that is left? I wonder if there's somebody that said, yes, I still have something in me. <laughs> All that is left in me is just a praise. I have a song that is left in me. I I have a melody in my spirit. Something is still there. God says, if there is something that is left, doesn't matter how bad it looks, how bad it tastes, or how bad it smells, I'm coming at you. Somebody praise God. If you have just a little praise left, I'm, I'm coming at you. you. If you got a little song left, I'm coming at you. Your family have been bad. Everything has been bad. Curse has come over. But if you, if you have a little song left in you, I'm coming at you. I see God coming at your sister. I see God coming at your brother. He's coming with a healing. Somebody in the church, open your mouth up and just bless God in the house one more time. If, if you got something left that God can use, if you got something left in your house, well, people have been talking about you, but you got something left. People have tried to malign you, but you got something left. People have tried to tide you down, but you got something left. They have brought you to the other man, but you still got something left. Some people want to write you off, but you still... Things ain't looking good, but you still got something left. Tell somebody God knows you. Your neighbor might not know you, but your, your friends might not know you, but, but somebody knows you. Can somebody open your mouth and just blast a hallelujah? Hey! Isn't it good to know that you have company? Isn't it good to know you have friends in high places? Your boss might not know you, but God knows your name. Your friend might not know you, but God knows your name. You're not going under. You're going over because God is your refuge. And your strength is your very present help in the times of trouble. He said, I will not leave you. I wonder if somebody can just kick something, kick something. I don't know what is standing before you, but kick it, kick it, kick it. Tell the devil, I got somebody with me who has shared my heavy load. He's a heavy load sharer. He knows how to lift you up, turn you around, plant your feet on a higher ground. Come on, lift your hands in the atmosphere and just bless God. God knows your name. If you need this message now, text me now at 378 03 that's right text not call text 3780382 the mark of the beast is on us i have the book that i'm promoting the book that says say no to that mark by pastor Leighton d smith hear me every one of you need to get this book Leighton Smith was a good friend of mine, and he wrote this book. Look at some of the other topics that are in the book. The emergence of the one world government, the European Union, secret organizations promoting the new world order, the coming caste society, the century of the chip, 
the significance of numbers in the Bible. Don't compromise. Say No to the Mark book is now available at Source of Light, and that's at Hagley Park Plaza in Halfway Tree, or can be picked up at the Lighthouse Assembly Church Office, One Garbally Drive, Spanish Town. Just text the numbers 3780382, and we'll give you directions. God bless you. So, the man said, yes, I know there's somebody who has royalty in his blood, but he's living in a ghetto. Somebody here in church, but you have moved into a spiritual ghetto because somebody messed with your name. Somebody messed with your integrity. You have migrated to a spiritual ghetto, to a low life kind of living. Ah, but I come back to tell you that wherever you are, you still have royalty in your blood. Uh, can somebody praise God? You still, you still have royalty, blood, 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 uh, blood of Jesus still running you. If you could just open your mouth up and blast a hallelujah. Let them devils know that you still have blood, royalty, Jesus is still alive rock in a weary land he's my shelter in the times of storm he said i will never leave you and i will forsake you so david said go get the man that i come to find somebody who is in your ghetto could you touch somebody on their shoulder and ask them, where are you where are you tell them the king is looking for you would you tell somebody the king is looking for you there's a change coming. It's not ordinary when a king sends for you. When a king comes searching for you. When, when the Holy Spirit. Don't you know when the Holy Spirit is in the church? It is God himself. God found you where you are right now. I don't know who I'm talking to in your house or walking down the street. But I come to tell you that God has sent me for you. The Holy Ghost is here knocking at your door. Come on, come on, come on. God is saying, I'm looking for you. Your moment of promotion has come. Tell somebody your moment of promotion has come. And King David didn't send a donkey or a horse. He sent a chariot. The most expensive kind of transportation. Can I tell you the transportation of God is in this house, which is the Holy Ghost. He's about to transport you to your next dimension. Oh, if you just open up your mouth in this anointing. I don't know where you are listening to this broadcast. But if you just open up your mouth uh, with this level of anointing, there is something that is going to sweep through the atmosphere. Somebody is about to be loose. I don't know who I'm talking to. But I sense the realm of the anointing. Somebody's here right now. Breaking yokes. Somebody's here right now. The yokes are about to be broken. Chains are shattered. I might not know your name. But I'm here to tell you. That you came because God sent for you. And now your life is being transformed. By the power of the almighty God. Open your mouth now and shout a praise. Not to cut the long story short, the man found himself back in a royal position. He spent the rest of his life seated at the table of the king. Let me show you the first revelation. We come into the kingdom deformed, but we don't have to remain deformed. In the case of Mephibosheth, when he came, he was deformed. He sat at the table for the rest of his life deformed. But when we come to Jesus, it doesn't matter what our deformities are. He knows how to take the nothing and make it into something. He knows how to take this nobody and make that person into somebody. Can I hear the church praise God? Open your mouth and give the Lord a praise in the house. Somebody shout a hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like somebody's understanding what I'm trying to say. You came this way, but you're not leaving this way. 
Let me give you a simple example. When I came into church, I was ugly. Because people told me that I was ugly. But I didn't stay ugly. Because when I came into the kingdom, he gave me beauty for ashes. Some of you ladies, I don't care what they say. But if you're in the kingdom, your life is changed. He's given you hope beyond hope. Victory upon victory. God is turning somebody's life around. Don't live here deformed. Some of your spirit is deformed. But before you leave here, tell God repair my spirit or give me a new brand spirit. So when I lift my hands, when I leave church, I can send a dynamite into the kingdom of hell. God is fixing you up. Something happened in your home that caused your spirit to be deformed. But the anointing is shattering the yoke right now. Somebody in the church, open your mouth up and shout a hallelujah. So Dr. Luke wrote the story from a doctor's perspective. He said the man's right hand was deformed. What he means by that is that there was no blood running in the man's vein. That's why his hand was hung down. The man's hand was dried up because there was no blood running in it. There's no life. Blood is life. Come on, somebody. The man's right hand was deformed. And in those days, and even now, if your right hand is deformed, it means that you've lacked power. Because your right hand speaks of power. So Dr. Luke says the man is not having any power in his right hand. And in those days, if you're a right-hander, it's your right hand that you use to pronounce blessing upon your sons. Come on, you know the story about Jacob. When Jacob stretched his hands and, and blessed the older boy with his left hand and used the right hand to bless the younger. And, and Joseph saw that and Joseph said, no, and let me fix it for you. And Jacob said, leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. I'm forming the cross. Because the cross makes a difference. I don't care where you came from. If you came from Remar Jungle or you came from Taz Meadows or you came from De La Vega City or wherever you came from, the, the cross makes a difference. I can take you and make you into something and turn your life around. I don't care where you were born. If you were born in the market, it's still okay. God, if he puts a cross on you, and that's what we've been doing here, giving you the cross. The cross of Jesus that makes the difference. So the right hand was to release more blessing. And not only that, your right hand is what you use for bodily function. And if you use your right hand... For bodily function, you could not use your right hand no more. So you have to use your left hand now. And people know that's what you're using. Nobody wants to shake your hand. Because your left hand has now become unclean. Somebody praise Jesus. And you know what used to happen in those days. And even until now, the right hand is what you use to serve in the restaurants. Most chefs, most waiters, when they're coming, they put their left hand behind them and use their right hand to serve. So here it is now. The man's left hand is what he's using now for bodily function. And nobody wants to shake his hand because his hand is unclean. Which means that he's suffering from social problems. Because people know your story. Nobody wants to fellowship with you because you're unclean. Nobody wants to shake your hand because they know who you are. Some people know who you are and don't want to have nothing to do with you. But tell them it's all right. Somebody in the church, open your mouth and praise God. Can I reach down to everybody that is here? Some of you are no good, but God said it's all right. People said you are no good, but it's okay. God's going to take you nothing and make you into somebody. Lift your hands up and praise God. God is about to fix the thing for you. Can you just open your mouth and shout a hallelujah in this church? There is something about to happen. If you need this message now, text me now at 378-0382. That's right. Text, not call. Text 378-0382. This is Bishop R.J. Edwards stopping by to let you know that God is with you. In spite of all the challenges that we're faced with as a nation, in spite of all the economic downturns, in spite of all the physical challenges with COVID, I'm here to let you know that our God is with us. 
just to also advise you that we're not having face-to-face -face church. We are on Zoom, Facebook, and on YouTube for our Sunday morning service. We have 9 a.m. service every Sunday morning. And also, we are on Facebook, YouTube, and Zoom every morning of the week for our prayer meeting. Please join us, Bishop Rowan Edwards' ministry page. It is always glorious. We start our prayer meeting 6 a.m. every morning. And I'm looking forward to see you. The mark of the beast is on us. I have the book that I'm promoting. The book that says, Say No to That Mark by Pastor Leighton D. Smith. Hear me. Every one of you need to get this book. Leighton Smith was a good friend of mine. And he wrote this book. Look at some of the other topics that are in the book. The emergence of the one world government, the European Union, secret organizations promoting the new world order, the coming caste society, the century of the chip, the significance of numbers in the Bible. Don't compromise. Say No to the Mark book is now available at Source of Light, and that's at Hagley Park Plaza, in halfway tree or can be picked up at the lighthouse assembly church office one garbly drive spanish town just text the numbers three seven eight zero three eight two and we'll give you directions god bless you this is bishop rj edwards saying goodbye i'm checking out now but remember join me next week same station 10.30 p.m.